All right, we're gonna talk about some questions here. First of all, we've now got over a million and a half views on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for that. So we're just gonna to try to pick some things out that seem to be pretty common questions and make it easier for you to understand. Now this one comes from Flying Diego. It says, Mike, once again, thank you for your work. Do you have a video on ball position relative to the feet? I guess this, this is crucial, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is very crucial. And ball position has to do basically with how and where your swing bottoms out. If I put this line right on the back of the ball and I'm gonna set up to this ball and the ball is on the ground, you want this line to be in the center of your stance at the worst. You don't want it any further back than that. Now, again, there are a lot of players, Nicholas played with everything up off his left heel because that's pretty much where this line was. The major thing is you want to be consistent with it. You want it when the ball's on the ground to be forward of center. And then you want to pay attention to as you swing, where does your swing bottom out? Now, if it's bottoming out forward of center in your stance, you're probably okay. If it's bottoming out behind center, then there's probably something going on in your swing you should fix. So you want the position of the ball, the back of the ball, to at least be just in the middle of your stance up to clear up off your left heel. A lot of that tends to be relative to how you swing, what your angle of approach is. As long as it's bottoming out in the same place and it's forward of center, when the ball's on the ground, you're probably okay. Here's the next question. This is from Ryan Miller. It says, I'm having a hard time getting the heel out without unhinging my wrists. Rotation of my wrists seems to rotate the toe out instead of the heel and I'm getting snap hooks. What am I missing? How can I rota rotate the heel out correctly? Ryan, I gotta tell you, this is probably one of the easiest things for most for me to do and the hardest things for amateurs to do because they have a hard time getting a feel for it. And it's really not that big of a deal. And so what happens, when I set up to this ball and I'm gonna hit it, all it really is is when I'm at the top of my swing, when I start down, all it is, is it's just right here, it's just a little rotation of my forearm. So all that's doing is it's taking this club that's sitting up here, and as I start down, as the handle comes down and my arms rotate, it rotates the heel out, okay, because my shoulders stay turned. Now here's what most of you do. To try to get the club out, you go like this with your right arm and your right shoulder. And that's what turns the face down. So if you watch the difference, here's, here's probably what you're doing with your right shoulder to try to get the face. So yeah, that's gonna turn into a hook. So when I'm up here, the handle's coming down, the heel's going out, but where's my right shoulder? So my right arm is staying back in here and the handle's working down and the heel's working out. Now if you do that and the handle works down and the heel works out, now all of a sudden, to be able to hit and just let the club go and not hit, you can't hit snap hooks from there. So it's about how you work the club out and you don't do it with your shoulder and your right arm like this. Next question, here's another comment. This is from So Hosterable. I hope I said that right. Basically asking the same thing about what Ryan was asking about how to work the club out. I'm gonna take a driver here the biggest problem that people have is as soon as you skid them to the top, you say, okay, I want the handle to come down, the club head to go out. Everybody tries to work the club with your shoulders. See, all I'm doing, what's my shoulder doing here? Okay, so the handle's coming down and the heel of the club's working out. So now the heel of the club's right there. Well, because my right arm has stayed back here and my right shoulder stayed back there. Now, if all of a sudden, my right shoulder tries to get the club out and it does this. So it takes my right arm and it pushes it up here like that. Okay, now that's gonna be a pull hook. If I would have understood how to make that move right there when I was trying to play, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation because I would have known how to be really aggressive with the club and not hit a pull hook. John T. asks the question from the video, what the golf swing feels like. He says, Mike, I started using this feel and it has tremendously improved my ball striking. Only question is that I can still push the ball to the right sometimes. 
Well, John, here's the deal. First of all, we're all human. I, the first comment I learned in Japan was Sodomo Kikado Ochido, which means even monkeys fall out of trees. So if you're occasionally losing one to the right, I mean, it's just, you're not gonna hit every one of them perfect. But what tends to cause hitting it to the right? Oh, you get up to the top and you're trying to make the handle come down and the heel go out. If you pull the handle forward at all when you're doing that, usually is what happens, and so you pull the handle forward, and even though the club's good, you can't quite catch the face up, so you'll lose it out to the right. So it just means that your pivot point moved a little forward instead of your pivot point happening back here off your right shoulder. So feeling how to start that club down and where that pivot point is, that it's right back in here, and you have the patience to make it pivot back there off your right shoulder, that's what's going to get the club out and keep it from going to the right. Next question is from Wonton Jr. Mike, as a tall man, do you play with standard length irons? Okay, when it, when it comes to fitting clubs, what's interesting, when people stand, when I stand and I just put my arms down to my side and I make a fist, and you look at how far my knuckle are, knuckles are from the ground, that's more a determining factor in what length clubs you use. So a lot of really tall people have really long arms. And so if we lined up on a line here, you could have 6, 8, 5, 10, and we all put our arms down, their knuckles would be pretty close to the same to the ground. Now there are some exceptions. There are tall players who have short arms. You need longer clubs for sure. There are shorter players who have long arms. You better get some shorter clubs. So basically what they found is it's about matching knuckles to the ground relative to where the industry is. So that's kind of how I do it. I've played half inch over standard length, which standard has changed over the years for my entire career. That's just what I'm comfortable with. Could I play with something shorter or something longer? Probably, but that's just what feels good to me. Next question. This is from Mr. Audio Posts, and it's about the PJ lesson with Julia Cigaris. Mike, when you say push away, are you pushing backwards towards your heels or to the right with your lower body? All right. That whole question is relative to the momentum of the club. So you're always pushing away from the momentum of the club. So there isn't an exact direction other than as the club starts down, when the club starts down and the momentum of the club is out here, is right there, you're actually pushing more towards the target line because you're pushing away from the momentum of the club. Now, as the momentum of the club works out in front of you, you're using the balls of your feet to push, continue to push away from it because the club's wanting to go this way. You're having to push away from it in sync with it to keep your balance. By the way, that's what makes your hips turn. You don't have to make your hips unwind. They do it automatically if you offset these forces correctly. So when you get up to the top, when you start down, as the handle starts down and the club starts out, you're gradually pushing away from that club. So it's a constant push away. It isn't just one direction. It's constantly pushing away from momentum, which is a rotational action. Here's our next question. It's about the split grip hockey drill from Kristen Schilt. Today I played with many hockey players and even though pretty small, they all hit the ball miles. Well, Christian, if I had to work with a player from another sport, I mean, that's one of the best sports to turn over into golf. And when you look at that split grip and what they do, Hockey's played back in here, and they learn how from here, they learn how to get the handle of the hockey stick down, and they learn how to get the stick out in front of them. Now they catch the ball or the puck back on the ice back in here, but they've learned how to create this, this lever, then how to release the stick to throw the hockey puck. They actually bend the stick into the ice and then shoot it to the target. So they've learned what that feels like. Now the other thing with hockey that's interesting, when they hit a hockey puck, when they come up to it, when they go to hit it, this foot basically slides out of the way. So they also know what it feels like to have their right hip stay out of the way of the shot. So when you get those hockey players, 
that have been have been playing like this for years and hitting something in here and then shooting it into a target and you give them a golf ball, all they do is they bring their hands together, their right hip works, they work the stick out in front of them and wham! They can create a lot of speed. Speed is not about how big you are. It's about how you use the levers correctly. Last question, and thanks very much for all your questions. This is how we're gonna learn, is for you to ask questions and me be able to keep you on track. So this question comes from the video, Margarita Swing in the Water. Now, what that was about was about her doing backstroke. This is from Jacob Rackett. This is a great idea to target certain muscle groups and help with strengthening them while becoming more flexible too. Let's just talk about that for just a second. The reason I like backstroke and swim, what you said about isolating muscle groups, you really don't want to isolate. You want to build the whole body as a system. Doing the backstroke is probably one of the best exercises relative to developing your shoulders, the rotation that you use in your shoulder sockets, and how your scapulas work to swing like you hit a golf ball. So it's an overall motion. It's not actually just focusing on one particular muscle group. Now what makes it really good is when you're swimming backstroke. So when I swim backstroke and I pull, how my shoulder blade works, how it retracts and holds my shoulder back, is exactly the same thing it should be doing here. So when I go here, my right arm rotates just like it rotates when I do, when I do backstroke. So all of a sudden now that scapula is retracting and now as you pull down into the water, as your arms pull down, your scapula stays contracted. That's what helps keep your arm back. And then on the follow through, the left scapula retracts and it rotates like you did on the backswing. So as I go back, the backstroke helps the scapula to rotate, so it gets my arm back where it's supposed to be. As my arm starts down, that lat muscle is holding my scapula back, so it gets my arms back down in front of me. So backstroke and swim helps you to start to feel how your right shoulder works on the back swinging into the ball, and the, fall, the opposite side helps you to feel how your arm and your shoulder blade work on the follow through. In closing, I want to thank you so much for your support. We've got over a million and a half views now. We've got about five to 10,000 a day. We're really helping people. I can see where people are getting better from the emails that you send. You can go to malaskagolf.com. We've got a book for sale and some other things. Most important, keep sending in your questions so that the next time we get together, we can answer some of what you think are stupid or basic questions. They're not. This is about you getting better, and I'm committed to that fact.